when I was five years old. I was introduced to Japanese storytelling through kamishibai, pictures that tell the story. The storyteller, he tells the story of the picture that we see, and then he pulls the picture out and there's the continuation of that story. One man creating all those voices was amazing. And I asked my father, that man is a magician. He said, no, in Japan, they're called benshi, and they tell stories, and they become the various character. It was fascinating. There was a time when people didn't know what sushi was. When I was working on Star Trek television series in the 1960s, I, uh, after work, Jimmy Doohan, uh, who played Scotty, said to me, well, what are you doing for dinner tonight? And I said, well, um, what about sushi? And he answered, Gesundheit. <laughs> he didn't know what sushi was. And so we drove down to Little Tokyo from Paramount Studios. The first thing I ordered for him was tuna. Uh, Maguro, because I thought uh, that would be probably cl the closest to beef. And he loved it. And he loved everything. He loved salmon, even loved ikra. You know, so I, I said, you're a real seafood lover. He said, oh, this is delicious. There's an adventure to Japanese cuisine. It's not just the eating. It's the visual, the art that's created on the plate. A dollop of yellow and a sprig of green and maybe a brown dab there. It's a work of art. Kaiseki is going to be a part of the Japan House offering. It's a very, very sophisticated and elegant form of eating. And uh, that's being introduced to Hollywood of all places. I think that's going to be very exciting. I think the sensitivity to beauty is a part of Japanese culture. Tradition, oneness with nature, working together communally, they are all part of uh, Japanese core values. We're one. It is a sensitivity to the oneness with the whole is a signature of Japanese art.